Hello, everyone. Welcome to our amazing monthly summit, Power Up You and Your Business um, to the Next I'm so excited to be back with you with another lineup of amazing guests. I can't wait myself to really learn uh, from these amazing experts, everything they are sharing with us on the different topics and the, and the work that they actually do in the world. I am your host, Alon. I help visionary leaders build a life and business in alignment with their purpose and marketing sales systems and team um, so that they can have the time and to enjoy their six and seven figure uh, business empires uh, while making an impact with their so um as those of you uh, that might be joining me for the first time uh, i run these monthly summits because i personally believe master class and every time we come and we share our knowledge and, and make a bigger impact in the world, we all benefit from that. So, so it's like um, any other uh, monthly summit that I conduct, uh, we're going to be diving right, right into our uh, content with our amazing speakers. So I introduce uh, to you my first speaker, Tina Kadish. Thank you so much for uh, being here today. Feel free to introduce yourself to our audience and then you can uh, dive right off it. You really feel that impact. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here and meeting all of you. I'm Tina Kadish. I'm in Connecticut, and I'm a life purpose and business coach, author, and speaker. And my journey is um, coming from the corporate world. I help women that want to leave the corporate world and want to step into their greatness. They want to find their purpose, their passion. And that was me in the corporate world. When I got laid off, I learned that I wanted to find my purpose. And in that journey, I discovered that over 85% of women are unhappy in their careers. They're stuck, unfulfilled, just lack joy, miserable. And I want to help them find their passion. And so I started my business, Life is Ideal, with that piece of when I got laid off and the struggles that I had, um, that I was, I was going from job to job and I wasn't happy, okay? And I really was miserable. And so when I um, learned that, I wanted to help other women to find their purpose. And so today, I help women that want to become an entrepreneur. They've left the corporate world, or I help them before leaving the corporate world. How do you find your passion? And I can help them um, to start a business with my process to help them create a business blueprint. And author of a book I created uh, called Freedom, The Seven Steps to Thrive in Life and Business, because I was all about freedom. How do we get that freedom? How do we get that fulfillment? So that's a little bit about me. Right I now. love that what you shared there with your journey. So um, I'm so looking forward to you sharing with us how do we find that purpose? How do we find that fulfillment, especially as a lot of things or pivoting from corporate to, to maybe their own business? Yes, so um, I will continue. Or are you going to want me to continue? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, good. Sorry, sorry. So, yeah, so oh. how do we do that? So <laughs> it begins with mindset, you know, and one of the things that I found is that a lot of times we have these thoughts, these fears that hold us back. And that was me, what I learned is that when I got laid off, I actually was a blessing in disguise because for the first time, I was able to figure out what I wanted to do. I was in training and development. And although I like being with people, I love delivering training, but I was stuck with the job. And so I think it begins here. You know, how do we get our thoughts in the way that we start to believe in ourselves, that we can achieve success? And so I had a, a mindset where the fear that I had that I wasn't good enough to do, to be on my own, to dream, dream was never something that I always thought that I could. I would just like go with the flow. Other people told me what to do. I was a people pleaser. It was always about thinking of others and I didn't think about me. So I think that how do we pivot? I think we need to begin with, Knowing what is it that we desire, like what is our why that we want to do, what excites us. 
So let's focus on us. Okay, so then we can make an impact for others because I'm all about making an impact for others, but it begins within us first. And so for me, it was really the mindset. And so my book, The Seven Steps to Thrive in Life and Business, really comes from that concept that the acronym freedom, the first step is faith. Why faith? Mm -hmm. And faith is not about religion here. I'm talking about the faith in yourself, believing that you can achieve, believing that there is something more than you may see right now, knowing that there is something more, okay? The next letter is R, release. A lot of times we have to let go of what's been holding us back, letting go of the outcome. I'm a firm believer, let's not attach ourselves to that outcome. We got to let it go. And so for me is I needed to let go the fear that I wasn't good enough, that I couldn't do it. Okay. And as an entrepreneur today and leaving the corporate world myself, that fear played a huge part. And I had to release that and not focus on the outcome, but just every day being in the present moment and doing the best that I could do and offering value and serving other women. The first E is evaluation. So we wanna look at the big picture. We wanna look at our progress. Evaluate where you are today. How did you get here from where you were? I know what the struggles are in entrepreneur, I mean, in, in being in the corporate world. I know the struggles because I've been there. And as an entrepreneur now, that transition from employee to entrepreneurship is something that I've learned and um, it's, it's a transition. It's definitely a transition. So I'm evaluating where am I in my progress today? Looking at the big picture, what are the systems that I've had to create? What are the processes I've had to create? All right. And as an entrepreneur, I got to tell you, and Ilona, you can definitely because you teach about this, it's those processes, those systems, those strategies, everything that we implement are all part of the evaluation piece. Okay, so that's an example of thriving. The second E is energy. Now, everything is energy. What we focus on expands, I always say. So are we putting our focus on, for me, not believing in myself, not believing that I can get clients? Because that was huge. Being an entrepreneur, do we believe that we can um, find clients? Do we believe that we're making an impact? Do we really value what we do? as an entrepreneur. And so that energy that we put out there, look at that. You know, are you putting positive energy? Are you putting out negative energy? And when I talk about energy, I'm talking about financial, your wellness, your, your like emotional, spiritual, all, everything is energy. And everything plays a part in that piece every day. It's how you are, how you think, what are your actions every day? And that will give you the results, okay? The D is determination. So when I look at determination, I'm looking at any obstacle that we have in our life, okay? When we know our why, we're going to get through every obstacle. There's going to be obstacles as an entrepreneur. There's obstacles in life. It's how do we get through them is so important. Are we determined? Like, I was so determined to be an entrepreneur that I said, I'm going to do whatever it takes. Now, what I did was that I didn't share. When I got laid off because of fear, I went back to a job. And I stayed in that job for 11 years too long as a corporate recruiter until 2018 that I got let go. It was a blessing. It was like the most beautiful thing that ever happened because I was making excuses up to then on why. And I was building my business part-time and working full-time. And in 2018, I finally was escaping and it was beautiful. And then I wrote my book a year later, okay? Um, in 2021 actually it was released. I started writing my book. So determination, I was determined. I was working on my business part-time, working full-time. And so, but fear is what kept me in that job. But I believe in a higher power, whatever you believe in, I must have manifested it because I got pushed out. 
for one little thing that I voiced my opinion on and they didn't like it. So they let me go. That's the experience that I had. So I, I am so blessed for that. The O is optimism. No matter what you're going through, are you optimistic that you're going to get through it? The determination, optimism that no matter what, you are going to weather the ups and downs. You're going to implement strategies that will get you through the ups and downs. There's ups and downs in being an entrepreneur. There's ups and downs in life, like I shared. So it is so important for us that are we weathering the ups and downs in our life and business? Because my book is about life and business. How do we thrive with these seven steps? And then the M is mindset. I ended with mindset and I began with faith because faith was the foundation, the believing in ourselves. Okay. And then mindset is what is our mindset? And there's two types of mindset that I, uh, that I teach and that I've gotten from, and I don't take credit for this, Carol Dweck. There's a book called The Psychology of Success. And she talks about two types of mindset. And she goes into a lot more depth than I'm going to today, but there's growth mindset and fixed mindset. Are we looking at the solutions of the problems or are we focusing on the opportunities, the possibilities? You know, every day is a possibility. As a business owner myself today, everything is an opportunity. No matter what we go through, are we looking at a solution or are we just wallowing in self-pity Oh no, this happened to me. I don't know what I'm going to do right now. Oh my God, everything is so bad. Yes, things could be out there, but it begins within us. What are we going to do to weather those ups and downs, to weather the storms that come in our life? Are we looking for options? I'm a firm believer in solutions. There's an option for everything, no matter what we go through in our life. So that's a little bit about my seven steps to thrive in life and business today. Wow, Tina, I love that framework. I love a good framework and a good process. <laughs> you already know me because I feel like that gives people the road, especially being an entrepreneur, as you just mentioned, it is a lot of times, you know, you have to grow your courage and faith because the journey is so unknown and, you know, everyone builds a business a different way, but of course there is patterns with everything. And I love that you have actually put together all the steps that you've been through, what has actually helped you along the journey to now have a roadmap for women that are making this decision and don't have to feel like, oh my God, you know, and get discouraged along the way because I, with uh, the fear of, you know, getting a job, right? Because a lot of us, when things don't go our way or we're not getting the results that we want in entrepreneurship, you know, the first thought, because it's comfort zone, right? I, I have the same thought that I constantly have to struggle with for, you know, for a long, long time where it's like, you want to go to comfort, you want to go to comfort, right? Just like Tony Robbins says, burn the boats. And a lot of times just self-sabotaging yourself in a positive way where you are just cutting all the cords. It's like, nope, back there. I have, you have to, I think personally, I do that a lot because there's so many options and choices that when the going gets tough, we just want to go to safety. We're like, well, at least I can have a salary and then I can build a business. But of course, yes. no, you can't do both because business building takes a lot of energy as you just shared with us today. So thanks so much for everything that you've shared. It was really, really awesome. Uh, Thank you. Definitely stick around to the end. Um, yes. I'll ask you for more opportunities for people to connect with you. So thanks so much for everything so far. Awesome. Now I'm going to my next, the next amazing guest, uh, David Allison. David, thank you so much for being here today. And I could introduce my guests, but I hope I make a boo boo when I'm with the introductions and I don't want to take away anything from anyone's journey. So David, feel free to introduce yourself uh, to our audience, uh, share with us the topic that um, you feel will make the most impact to our community. David, I don't think we can hear you. No, Something with no, you. I have to master the mute, master of the mute button. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm in Scotland. It's currently five seventeen p.m. in the afternoon. Um, wherever you are in the world, blessings on your day. I'm really happy to be here. 
Ilona and I just connected a few weeks ago through another uh, one of these wonderful events. So who am I? Um, I'm an intuitive coach, a guide, an aspiring partner to business owners. Um, I've kind of evolved into that. Um, I've been a coach four and a half years. For three of those years, I worked for Tony Robbins as a master coach and business results trainer. Uh, I left the Robbins community 18 months ago. I created my own methodology, which I use with all of my clients, whether they're students or millionaires. There's five steps to it. Number one is we work on your beliefs. Number two, we work on your emotions and your identity. Number three, we work on your habits. What are the habits you need to have in place to get the life that you want to live? Number four, we go into the future. We open you up to the possibilities of what's really possible for you, things you can't even see or imagine. Only after I've done all that with clients do I then start working on goals. So what do I want to share with you in this short time I have today? I want to talk to you about emotions. And emotions comes very heavily in the second uh, section that I do with clients. So what are emotions? Well, emotions, quite simply, are messages. So if you're in fear, what is fear telling you? Fear is telling you that you need to take action. If you don't take action, then you're going to stay in fear. And many people talk about fear as false evidence appearing real or face everything and run or whatever it is. There are many different acronyms for it. But when we're born, we only, we only actually have two fears. The fear of loud noises and the fear of falling down. Many of you will still dream, and in your dream, you're afraid you're going to fall, and then you wake up. When you were a baby, and if you watch a baby now, as soon as a baby hears a loud noise, it cries. All the other fears that we have in life are man-made. They come from a thought. And maybe if you've got a pen and paper, you want to write these things down. We have thoughts. We have thousands of thoughts every day. From those thoughts, we start using some language. Oh, this thought becomes language. We then attach an emotion to it. From that emotion, if we, if we have that long enough, it becomes a belief. From that belief, we will take action. From any action we take, we get a result. And that result will give us confirmation of our belief, or it will give us something new to think about. And I could go on about this for an hour, hours and hours and hours, but I've only got a short space of time. So take those things, thoughts, emotions, words, beliefs, actions, and results. And it goes in a little wheel. So my questions for you, what are the default emotional states that you live in every day? As human beings, we have default emotions, emotional homes that we live in. So, and I was talking to a client this afternoon, his default emotional home was, I'm sad, I'm lonely. That's the emotion that he lives in most days. And there are, there are four aspects to your personal psychology. What do I mean by personal psychology? So every day you wake up and you get out of bed. And what you do in, in a day, 20% of what you do is mechanics. 80% is your personal psychology. What do I mean by mechanics? Mechanics is you brush your teeth, you make coffee, you have a shower, you drive the car. You've done these things so many times that they are, you don't even think about them. You do them automatically. It's almost like they're mechanical. The other 80% is what we call personal psychology. It's how you show up in the world. What's the emotional place that you live in? What do you focus on? What language are you using? How is your physiology? And what do you believe every day? So if your emotional state is one that's negative, then as the previous presenter said, what you focus on creates more energy. 
my my saying on that is what you focus on, you feel. So if you're focusing on all the things you don't have in your life, I don't have the love of my life, I don't have enough money in my bank account, you are going to generate more of that. From that place, you will then start using language that said, oh, I'm always going to be poor. I'm never going to be happy. I'm never going to fall in love. From that place, that language creates a belief. From that belief, you take action. But if you believe you're never going to find the love of your life, then guess what? It ain't ever going to happen. And I work with clients on beliefs. Let's talk about beliefs briefly for a second. So you might have a, a belief, one belief that said, I believe that I'm going to meet the love of my life. But you may have another belief that said, all men are liars and can't be trusted. So you've got two different beliefs, but they conflict with each other. So if that belief about relationships is men can't be trusted and they're all liars. If you want to meet the love of your life, if you have that belief here and this one here that says, I want to, I'm going to meet the love of my life, but all men are liars and can't be trusted. What do you think is going to happen? So the language that you say to yourself and the language that you hear is very, very important. There's a great saying by a guy called Jim Rohn, who's no longer with us. He said, every day feed the garden of your mind. So what is it you are feeding your mind with every day? How much TV are you watching? When you wake up in the morning, do you pick up your phone and do you look through social media and see how wonderful everybody's life is? There are three types of business in the world. There's your business, there's everybody else's business and God's business. And as human beings, our emotions are affected by how much time we spend in other people's business and God's business or the universe's business, whatever you believe. I guarantee you most people spend most of their time in everybody's business but their own. We spend so much time comparing our lives to other people. We spend so much time worrying about things we, we, we've got no control over. How much time do you actually spend on yourself every day? So what can you do if you're in a poor state of emotion or a low vibration? Well, you can start asking yourself some questions. So if you're, if you're feeling sad, ask yourself, what am I really feeling sad about? And the thing is, you felt sad before. And you got over it. You felt angry before. You got over it. So knowing that you can get over an emotion is the first step. The second one is, is to ask yourself a question. Is What can I do right now to feel happy, to feel ecstatic, to feel passionate? And there are some th simple things you can do. I mentioned earlier there were four steps. There's Number one is what you're focused on. No, number two is your language. Number three is your physiology. And number four are your beliefs. And the, most, the quickest thing, the quickest way to change your emotion is to change your physiology. So if you want to change your physiology, so if you're feeling in a bad mood or you're feeling upset, Put on your favorite bit of music that excites you, gets you passionate, and start moving your ass. I guarantee you, you'll stop feeling sad. It might take you a few minutes, but I guarantee you, you'll do it. Find your favorite piece of music. Or I live in the countryside in Scotland. I go out bare feet and stand in my garden and connect to the earth. And I look out the window and I see the beautiful nature I'm surrounded with. That changes my mood in an instant. So my final question is, my final thought for you guys is, when you come up with something, don't ask, so don't say, why am I feeling like this? Why, why, why? Because when you start asking the why question, you will get super defensive. Your, your ego will get super defensive. And it will give you a thousand reasons why you're not with the love of your life. You're not rich. You're not. 
and just ask yourself, okay, what do I need to do differently? And who do I need to be to have what I want in life? I'll leave you with those thoughts. Thank you very much for being here and for listening. David, that, that was amazing. There's so many wisdom and nuggets that you shared. And the one that stood out to me that I, I think we have to keep um, emphasizing on is comparison is toxic. We need to stop the game and just put our blinders on and just stay, you know, very consistent and focus on our journey. I think that is amazing. So thank you so much, David, for everything you have shared. And the one thing that attracted me me when we first initially connect this, you speak about the tuition. As entrepreneurs, what is it that you can share with us? How is it that we can tuition so that we are more effective in really aligning our life and business? Um, for me, that's quite simple. Get out of your head. We live our lives in our head. Um, the simplest way to, in this like. And my old boss, Tony Robbins, if you've ever been to one of his events, you're going to hear him say this many, many times. If you go to Unleash the Power, then you'll hear this a hundred times a weekend. If you're in your head, you're dead. If you're in your head, you're dead. And you always know your intuition. Your intuition is your, is your, it's your, it's your gut instinct. It's that you know instinctively when something's not right, when something's not an alignment. But when you're in your head, you can't see it. So if you need to, and if, and, I, and again, if you get overwhelmed, stop what you're doing. Close your eyes, put your hands on your heart, and feel your heartbeat. Your heart never, ever lets you down. Everything you've been through in your life, it's always been there for you. And until the day you die, until the day you stop breathing, it's going to take you through whatever you go through. And when you connect to that and just think of one thing that you're grateful for, you'll be in a different place. I felt that. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. In your head, you're dead. But in your heart, you have the answers. And just stay aligned in your journey. Amazing, amazing stuff. Thank you so much, David. Uh, for sharing that. And I'll come back to you um, after all the speakers have done as well. Awesome. Now, my next amazing speaker, which we have connected uh, through her, I mean, she has so much going for her, Rebecca Whitman. Whit Whitman. I butcher the names all the time. So sorry about that. Rebecca, thank you so much for being here and uh, looking forward to um, your introduction to our audience and everything that you'll have to share with us. Yes, it's so great to be here. And you did such a phenomenal interview on my show, The Balanced, Beautiful, Abundant Show. So you can listen to Alona's interview on Spotify or Apple or wherever you listen to podcasts. My name is Rebecca Whitman. It's so great to be here with you amazing entrepreneurs. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Am I still on camera? Yep, you are good. You are back. Okay, perfect. I'm back. So I, I teach about abundance. And this all started, I was watching my dad die in a nursing home. And at the same time as my dad's life was ending, my marriage was dissolving. And I would fly back and forth from LA to Cincinnati, Ohio, where my dad was in a nursing home. And in one of our last conversations, he said, Rebecca, I know you're in LA pursuing your acting, but I want you to write something. And I don't care what you write. It could be a blog, a magazine article, or an essay. I just want you to write about how you think about life because I think it's very unique. And my dad used to say that I live my life as if I'm on vacation. So I really took that to heart because like I said, it was like his dying wish and I didn't know what I was going to write about, but I believe that God, the universe speaks through people. So I was sitting in my financial planner's office. He was looking at my portfolio and he saw that I was worth over a million dollars. 
And he's like, every time you come in here, you're in workout clothes. Like what? And I know that your dad died and I know that you got a divorce. Like, how are you doing this? I think you need to teach other women what you're doing. And that is what inspired me to write my book. It's called How to Make a Six-Figure Income Working Part-Time. And what happened was, okay, shortly after my dad died, my dad died on a Wednesday. My divorce was finalized on a Friday. My life didn't fall apart. Yes, I felt deep sadness. Yes, I felt the loss and the grief but I was still able to maintain my health, maintain my six-figure income. And how I did it was I divide life into seven pillars of abundance. And they're all like spokes on a bicycle wheel. If you focus on one, the other ones will suffer. So the first pillar, and they're in order of importance, the first pillar is your spirituality. So it's very important to me and what I teach my clients is to have a morning routine where you connect with spirit. You could do it through writing, journaling, praying, meditating, breath work, yoga. There's so many different ways to connect to spirit, but it's very important that you do that first thing in the morning. The second pillar of abundance is fitness body before business. I have a lot going on today. And literally, it's so funny. I was in the parking lot of the gym with my husband and I told him everything that I have going on. He's like, we can't go to the gym. You have to turn around and we got to go home. You got to prepare for your summit. And later on, I'm doing my talk show. And he's like, you got to go home and prepare. And I go, nope, body before business. Health is wealth. If you have your health, you have everything. If you don't have your health, you have nothing. You could make a million dollars a month, but if you're in the hospital connected to IVs and tubes because you don't have your health, what is it worth? So I really believe health is wealth, and that is why fitness is the second pillar. The third pillar, some of my associates spoke about so eloquently, emotions. Emotions are so important because emotions are going to attract to you what you want to manifest. Can you guys hear me? Am I being heard? Because I hear someone in the background. Um, yeah, we can emo hear you. Okay, emotions are so important because your emotions mm -hmm. all come from two basic emotions, love or fear. So if we're in fear-based thinking as entrepreneurs, we're in scarcity. Oh my God, how am I going to get my next client? How am I going to pay my bills? What if I should go back and get a job? Or we're in love, which is abundance thinking. There's plenty of clients. There's plenty of money. I'm going to figure this thing out. I'm, I have everything it takes to be successful, appreciating the journey. The next thing is romance. Your romantic partner affects your vibration and it affects how much money you make. Love and money are deeply intertwined. So it's very important that you attract the right partner and that you have the courage to walk away from relationships that are toxic and that are no longer serving you. The next pillar of abundance, and I have a whole course called the seven pillars of attraction because I, I've been married six months and I manifested my soulmate after that terrible divorce. The next one that I want to talk about after romance is mindset. And that's what we're all doing today. We're working on our mental. I'm so happy that you guys are here. Thank you so much for inviting me and for sharing the space, other coaches and entrepreneurs, because we're working on our mindset. And I'm just taking notes like crazy. Every day we can learn and grow. There's podcasts, there's summits like this, there's YouTube videos, there's coaching. There's just so much right now. We're kind of in the golden age of mindset and personal growth. So we get to just expand and grow every day. And it's such a gift. The next area is social. Your vibe attracts your tribe. And Alona has such a beautiful tribe of women and men who want to be six and seven figure entrepreneurs. I call my tribe the balanced, beautiful and abundant community because that is my goal is to help people to go from burned out to balanced, beautiful and abundant. But get into a community. Community creates immunity. We're all worried about our immune system. We're coming out of this pandemic. We'll find a community that supports you, that lifts you up, that calls you higher and find mentors that you can follow because if you do what they did, you can get what they got. And the final pillar, the seventh pillar of abundance is what we all think is abundance, and that's financial. 
why is financial the last piece of the puzzle to come into place? Everybody thinks it's the other way. I'll go out and make a ton of money. I'll hire a personal trainer. I'll get in great shape. I'll attract the love of my life. We'll attend Tony Robbins seminars together and work on our mindset. But finance is the last piece of the puzzle to come into place. Because when you have a healthy body, when you're in a healthy community, when you're in uplifting, loving relationships, when your emotions are coming from love and abundance, you are easily going to attract six and seven figures. And that is what I teach my clients. And that is what I've been doing myself. And I have a lot of great stuff that I want to share with you. If you want to keep in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse, Rebecca E. Whitman. I love to keep in touch with people. You can listen to my wonderful podcast that Alona has been on. All this stuff is in my link in bio, which I'll, which I'll pop in. And then if you want to meet me in person, I'm going to be speaking at Columbia University in New York City, June 22nd at 2. I'm going to be doing a talk called Blue Talk, Business Life Universe. It's kind of like TED Talks meets Chicken Noodle Soup for the Soul. I'd love to see you there. Everybody who attends this uh, webinar today will get a free VIP ticket. Again, the link is in my bio, and it's not just me. It's Heart Centered Entrepreneurs Speaking for Two Days. It's a two-day it's a two day free conference. And then I also have a five-step master class on how to create a six-figure side hustle. It's 45 minutes. It'll be awesome to help you guys. I know you guys are all motivated to make six and seven figures. And... If you want a breakthrough call with me, I will also give you a free coaching call. So uh, that is all going to be in the link in my bio, which I'm going to drop in the comments. And I'm just very excited to be here with you wonderful entrepreneurs. So thank you for listening. And again, my name is Rebecca Whitman, and I'm a success mentor. Thank you so much for everything you shared and um, all the amazing ways that you are making an impact with, I always say our offers is the way that we serve people at the highest level. So it sounds like you have so many amazing things going forward. It's important than that. It's like, thank you for showing up as the authentic you, you know, and I love what you shared with a lot of times we just feel like we have to have it all together or we'll skip our health or our exercise because we just have like a long agenda. don't even know how we're gonna you know uh, tackle it for the day but that decision you made with your husband is like no, health comes first right I have to do this for me and then the rest will flow around me so I think it was really powerful you shared that as a lot of us into those quick five second decisions can pretty much you know we say no to our health we say no to our self-care we say no to the other things because we we just feel like all the priority that we have to grow in our business and do the day to day, just, you know, so much focus a lot of times. So you shared that for sure. And um, um, definitely stick around as um, I would love to ask you at the end regarding your mission and impact as I will do with everyone. Thanks again for sharing. Um, and um, I am going to my next amazing guest, Nicole. Nicole, thank you so much for on. And Nick, I'm very active and um, always serving our badass mission driven entrepreneurs inside our Facebook group. And I am so excited to see uh, what she will share with us today and a little introduction. So, N Nicole, you have the stage. Thank you, Iluna. And good afternoon to my fellow speakers and everyone else who is listening in. It is an absolute pleasure to be on this platform, Ilona, sharing with all of you. I am coming way, way, way from the Caribbean. I am in Trinidad and Tobago. We're neighbors with Venezuela. So I am all the way from the Caribbean there. And I have three portfolios within my company, Okura Events, where I am an image and reputation coach, a public relations consultant, and a personal stylist. Now, I've been in the media and entertainment industries for about 20 years. I've done every possible, ask, well, not every possible, but I've done so many things during that time from being a radio personality to television talk show host, television actress even, magazine columnist, um, theater actress, ad, ad campaign producer, you name it. And I always knew 
being in even being in corporate media everything that i was doing was going to somehow contribute to me being an entrepreneur because it's something i wanted to be since i was like 7 years old right so i've been an entrepreneur for 5 years now it's been quite a journey sometimes it's heaven sometimes it's a jungle but one thing that i love doing is helping women to find their power i love as a as an, an image and reputation coach and personal stylist i would only with women i would exclusively with women and i help them to find their true style but also help them to operate with confidence and operate in their authentic self and i also help them to operate with authority because so many times we feel as women we have to be seen and not heard and you know we we want to toe the line and we don't want to rock the boat or anything but there are ways that you can speak your mind speak your truth and do it with authority but you can still do it in a way that you know does not hurt anyone or isn't um actively aggressive you know so this is what i tend to do with my female clients and as a public relations consultant what i tend to do is find very modernistic strategies concepts ideas for companies to move into these new um territories that we have especially with the new generations such as the millennials and the generation z so in a nutshell that's what i'm about So today I'm going to be talking about using your personality as your superpower. And of course, a lot of us think we're super women, right? Like we can do anything we set our minds to. So for me, any time I talk to an entrepreneur and I say, "Well, okay, what do you think your unique selling points are?" and they would immediately talk about their the features of their products or their customer service or where they're located and all of these different things and find those are things that can work for your USP what about your personality especially if you are the face of your business if you are the face of your brand i am the face of my business i started off my business with a very corporate feel but i knew that eventually i would want to be the face of my business so when you're the face of your business how social media and business on the whole operates now is that people want somebody they can relate to in some way and this is where using your personality can be used as your superpower so i have an acronym i love acronyms i'm a real nerd when it comes to it So I have an acronym to just show you what I'm talking about. So the acronym is actually GROW, G R O W. So the first one is G. And with G, give glimpses into who you are. Whether it's your idiosyncrasies, your likes, your dislikes, whatever it is, people want to be able to relate to you on some level, whether it's online or offline. even if you'll disagree even if you don't have the same likes and dislikes there are things that you can bond about so for instance um with some people they say i'm a coward i'm afraid of heights like don't tell me go mountain climbing or zip lining or anything like that i'm not doing it you know and there are people who you know they love doing it and i have associates who love doing it so even though we have a different um like where it comes to that we can still bond over it we can laugh and those are things that really help you to connect with people so give people glimpses into it don't be afraid of saying you don't like something or you like something that's okay be who you are right so for r and this may sound a bit west indianish but it's rank up yourself right rank up yourself meaning floss that was a, an old slang right but the thing about it is don't be afraid to talk about yourself don't be afraid to tell people how good you are at something and it's not about being arrogant it's not about being boastful 
but it's about being confident about who you are and what you can bring to the table. So if you're good in something, say you're good in something. If you think you can accomplish something, say you can accomplish something. If you feel you can do a good job and, and you, you think, well, hey, you know, if you want to get it done, I'm your person, be that way. I always tell my clients, I said, be pushy. And I always get a look like, what? I'm like, yeah, be pushy. And I'm not saying be pushy in, a, in an aggressive or abrasive way, but be pushy in the sense that you're alert to opportunities and you have no problem saying, hey, I'm a good fit for that. Hey, I can do this. Hey, did you ever think of doing X, Y, Z? I really think I can contribute well to that. Don't be afraid to rank up yourself. You are you, and that's your superpower too, right? There's nobody else on this earth like you, okay? There may be some similarities in between, but they're not you. Oh, own yourself. And this piggybacks on the last one. Now, I always tell people I'm a diva, and some people see it for themselves. I am a diva. I will admit that. But I swear to you, I'm the most personal diva, personable diva you'll ever come across, right? So my thing is, own who you are. I own that I'm a diva. And it's not to say, you know, I treat people badly or anything, but I just have a way of doing things. And I, I, I can be bougie when I'm ready. And, you know, all of these things that go with being a diva. And, you know, I'm girly and I like makeup and all of these different things. I like clothes and I like shoes and handbags and all of that, you know. And I own who I am. You know, so if someone tells me, oh, you know, you're weird, which my mom always tells me in a joking way. But, yeah, I am. And maybe it's not, is it weird or is it unique? Whatever you choose to call it, I am me. And when you have a personality where you own yourself, believe it or not, it rubs off on people. And they think, well, you know what? I like this about me and I like that about me and I like that about me. And it sort of gives them the confidence to come out and say, well, hey, yeah, I, I, I like this about me. And if you don't like it, well, tough. You know, so all of those things have an impact on people. And when they see you operating as your authentic self, especially as a coach, and I say, well, hey, if you come to me, I'm not going to sugarcoat everything for you. I can't tell you everything you want to hear. I have to tell you what you need to hear. And when you operate like that, that endears people to you. And it's a very, very powerful thing. And it's something that I do not take for granted. And the last one, the W, wave negativity. If people want to pay you with negative thoughts and cynicism and, and all of that, you know, just negative energy, if they want to pay you with that for spending time with you, cut it out. Cut it out. Wave negativity. If you have a light aura, if you have a personality that is fun, that is cheerful, that is warm, again, it endears people to you. No one wants to be around a Debbie Downer or a negative Nancy, right? Like, who wants to do that? If anybody is negative around me, I try to distance myself from them. And when you have that type of personality, people want to spend time with you. Two hours with me in a coaching session, we're giggling like schoolgirls sometimes in between because the energy is just so engaging. You don't want someone to come to a coaching session with you and you're all stoic and serious and all of that. There is a place where you can be professional, but you can be friendly and have fun too. So when you have that sort of aura with people, it makes them feel comfortable. And even when I was a magazine columnist, I, I realized that the way I was and the way I treated with people, they became so comfortable with me. A lot of times they told me very, very personal things. And the funny thing about that was that they would tell me it and then they would say, but I don't want you to include that in the feature. And they would trust me not to do it. And I wouldn't do it. They felt so comfortable 
with me at that moment. And that is a superpower. So if you have people who would come up to you and talk to you and confide in you, you'd be thinking, why do I always attract these people who are just telling me all of their business? But it's because of your aura. That's what it's about. And it's strong. And it illuminates everywhere around you. So remember, you can use your personal branding, use your personality as a superpower in business. Trust me, it works. Because in, this, in, in these times, people want to feel as if they can connect with people. So it's all about being you, being a person, being a warm body that they can relate to. Okay? So just remember that. Grow. Right? Give glimpses of yourself. Rank up yourself. Own who you are and weave negativity. And trust me, that is something that will work together with your holistic approach to doing business. So I thank you so much for this forum. And I hope I was able to impart well to all of you. Thank you so much. Oh, Nicole, that was power. Love what you said with own your power and be pushy and be assertive. And it's okay to have yes. a strong presence. Right, and you attract the people that relate to you in that manner for sure. And today, it's all about the personal brand. So I love that you said that it's all about your personality. It's not about the products. It's not about the offers. It's not about the services we offer. It's about our personality with other people emotionally. And when you are building a brand, a community, an audience, anything, your vibe attracts your tribe. Right. So oh, everything yes. that you shared was. On point. Thank, Thank you so you much for so everything much. you shared with us. You're welcome. Absolutely. Now we're on to our uh, last but not least, Tanya Miller. Tanya, thank you so much for being here today. Looking forward to learning uh, more about you and also you have to share with us today. Well, I'm unmuted. Okay. Thank you so much as well, Alana. I really appreciate it connecting with you um, maybe a month or so back. And I definitely have enjoyed everyone that shared today. Um, I won't be labor. I know our time is running short. So I want to make sure I just get out a few key points. Um, a little bit about me. My name is Tanya of Talking with Tanya. That is my blog, blog, whichever one you call it. It's that old. It was an email back in the day. But now it's on my social media um, but it's called Talking with Tanya, so that's usually where you'll find me. But also, Tanya J. Miller is the platform to which I work and do my services as an author, speaker, coach, and strategist. So today, I have on my speaker hat. Um, and I just wanted to talk to you guys about um, motivated effort. And this comes from um, a project that I'll soon be releasing, but it's still a telltale sign that we all have to live through and go through every day. Um, you know, when I first wrote the book, Motivated Effort, I wrote it before there was a pandemic, before we needed motivation to put pants on, you know, before we needed motivation to, uh, you know, just get out of our house, you know, and do things again. And so I found this so, like, you know, on point, if you will, and, and, and an almond, if you will, a faith that uh, destiny had its way and it came out now, um, after it, and now we're trying to figure out how to do life now. And I think um, it was the gentleman, he said, uh, he said, um, Maxwell's quote, and he said, part of mine, but one of the, I was like, okay, yeah, he's on point, because one of the um, first, my first book projects, it was about getting out of your head and jumping back into life because how sometimes we get stuck. And we don't know how to get unstuck and we forget all about purpose. So when you said it, I was like, okay, my ears are like tuning in, tuning in. Not that I wasn't before, but I was like, oh, he said he, he doesn't work, he doesn't work. But yeah, you know, I definitely understand, you know, how you can go from doing life and how you can go from being that person that you know, was involved in doing everything to that person that doesn't anymore. And I can tell you that because I'm, I'm living it. You know, I'm, I, um, brief test, brief, um, sharing testimony or story, <laughs> whichever one you want to call it. 
But I, um, in the pandemic, was COVID was like not even on my radar. And people were like, what do you mean? Because I was extremely sick. I had just found out during COVID. Now, isn't that crazy? It took being in COVID to figure out how sick I was, but literally being in COVID and going, trying to go to doctors and all that to find out you're literally living with a chronic disease and nobody knows in the Dallas Fort Worth area how to treat it. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know how to treat it? Like, I'm sick. <laughs> but my life really halted for two years. And I've started to pick up the pieces ever since then. And as I picked up the pieces, I literally had to think about how much has changed and, you know, how much is gone. And it's still beyond my control, you know, and, and what, what, how does that affect me emotionally? How does that affect me spiritually, mentally, you know, even physically? And I said to myself, well, the only one that's going to get up and do it is you. And I say that to myself, like I have to have full-blown conversations with myself. Let me tell y'all that. I have to have full-blown conversations to get me to move. Because when I move, it's painful. I, um, I have chronic neural Lyme disease. And what that is, is it's a very painful disease. Um, and it's a lot of other co-infections and a lot of other things that happen with that disease. But the number one that anybody would tell you is pain or the loss of cognitive um, and neuro um, attributes and thinking. And so I have to talk to myself every day to motivate myself and to get to realize the effort will not come from my caregiver, the effort will not come from my husband. Nobody can do anything until I do it myself, right? And it was so funny that I'm living it and now I'm reading it because I literally have still pick it up. It hasn't came out, but I pick it up myself. I started already talking about it because I know what it's like. You know, I know what it's like, you know, where people say, you know, they have an idea of where they want to go, what they want to do, but they don't know how to get there. They're stuck. They, 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 they can't figure it out. They, they don't know. And then I know others that say, okay, they see the light at the end of the tunnel. Door, but once again, how do they follow it? What are the steps? What are the paths? And so I want to be the one to help them because I'm living it. Like I know, um, especially for not just individuals with Lyme or, you know, or even cancer or, or ALS or MLS or any type of um, debilitating chronic disease. Life is hard. But for one thing I, I know for sure coming out of this is I want to be a voice. And I hope I'm the voice today to encourage someone, not just someone with a physical uh, debilitating disease, but it could be a heart problem, you know, a love, emotional problem. It could be a, a emotional or mental thing that they haven't been able to deal with, but they know they need to. Whatever that thing may be, I hope that there's something today you get out of what we're sharing, not just me, but what we've shared to know that you can get to your purpose. You can get to the other side of things. That's the thing that I say. You know, we do life and leadership unapologetically on purpose. And everybody's like, oh, I like that unapologetic on purpose thing. And I'm like, because you have to be like, sometimes you have to become, you know, a warrior for your purpose, for your dreams, you know, and, you know, if you will, in, I'm going to use it like indignant, you know, a little bit. Like you have to do things that you wouldn't normally do because if you keep doing the things you normally did the way you normally did them, then nothing will change. Nothing will, nothing, you won't get anywhere. You won't go anywhere. You won't get the purpose. You won't get to any of that. And so the thing about it is, if you want that, then you're going to have to do some things. And some of those things, I apologize, guys. Some of those things that you have to do, number one, here are some learning objectives. And I'm just going to run down them quickly, maybe ad living a little too behind them because I know we're running time, short on time. So learning objectives, you know, something as you think about it and as you even, if you decide to get the book or just from what I'm sharing today, I want you to, one, be able to cultivate a deeper understanding of your personal leadership. 
because a lot of times people think leadership is a title, a position, someone in authority over them. They look beside, they look outside of themselves and not inside. Maybe you are a part, a, the personal leader of you. If you don't have kids, if you, I don't care if you have kids, a husband, a mom, whatever, you still number one, the first leader of you. So cultivate that. Get a deeper understanding of what personal leadership is and how you can not just account for it, but then how you can um, you can then uh, be able to uh, be a, accountable to it. You know. Next thing, empower individuals to seek character development. That's another thing when it comes to motivated efforts. You can't do it alone always. Sometimes you need personal development. You need skill training. You need, you know, to make you take a test and kind of dig, dig deep into, you know, how you think or how you per, per, your responses. Are some, you know, you may need an Enneagram test. You may need a, a KSA test, a gifts test. You may need um, different things to be able to see where you are and know where you can go and how you can get there further. You may need a life coach. You may need one of us on this call. Be sure to get the information when we give it to you so you can get what you need. You know, another thing is you have to become self-aware um, because that's the prerequisite before assumptions. If you are not self-aware, then assumptions made about you and for you will always take lead. And I would not, I would hate for you to be a person that is not self-aware and just use whatever people assume about you as 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 your um your running your running you know your 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 baseline. I don't want that to be your baseline. I would hate that. I want you to be self-aware of who you are. You know, I believe the young lady before said, "You got to know who you are." You know, you got to know your intricacies and your nuances and all of that. I'm gonna tell y'all how my mama told me. The way she told it to me was. Uh, can't nobody beat you being you. And so she said it to us just like that so that we would know over and above abundantly that being us is our assignment and our responsibility and being somebody else, that's theirs. So mm -mm, be you. Last thing I just want to say um, is that, you know, you, you, you just have to really hone in on identifying your personal ownership. Because that's the requirement. You know, you're digging into it, but then once you dig into it to get that understanding, then you need to identify what is your personal ownership. You know, what are you about? You know, what's your personal statement about you? What's your personal purpose statement? You know, what are your personal dreams and goals and visions? You know, I'm I'm a person, I say it all the time. I you know, I think um, you know, the, all the parties at the first of the year, the vision board parties and all of that. But if you don't put the actual work behind it and the steps to get there, then you just made a pretty board. You just made a pretty little journal, and it's cute. But if you don't do anything with it, then you're not going to have the tools that you need to stay motivated all the way past March. Because those that just right, make those little cute little boards, don't put steps, don't put action, don't put accountability, they stop by they might stop before January 31st. Most of them get to March and then they can't do it no more. But it should be an easier thing. You ought to have gotten tired of that. I only go so far. You ought to want to go further. And that's what I hope that you got out of this conversation. That's what I hope you got out of everyone. Because we just want you to power up. That's it. We want you to power up and excel. And so thank you, Alana, for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. And throwing it back to you. Wow, Tanya, thank you so much for everything you share, your personal journey and learns that you shared. And what stood out to me is personal leadership. I also attach it to business or you know, being a leader somewhere in a corporate job or, you know, uh, related to professional, but we all self leaders first. We need to learn how to self lead ourselves first. And that is, uh, we all have the capability for sure. Once we craft a vision and purpose that, you know, we want about in our lives. And I love the, that you shared that um, everything is beautiful. Vision boards, all these tools are amazing, but without the action behind it, they just stay as, you know, what, what it is. So that's why we need to really ensure that. This is why, personally, I believe in strategy steps, things that we need to take, uh, because it needs to be action.
behind, you know, realizing. So thanks so much for sharing that. I would love to invite all of my speakers on stage uh, for a last minute um, uh, question to what is it that you guys feel is your mission and the impact that you want to make in the world and where community can connect with you. So David, we will go you first. Hi. Um, yeah, one thing I didn't share earlier is I'm about to launch a program to support men with their mental health in the UK. That's the big thing that I'm about to do. How you can connect with me, I'm on Instagram, David Allison Coaching. I'm on Facebook, uh, David Allison Coaching. And I have my own Facebook page. Um, I put a link in the group. If you want to book uh, a call with me, just click the pro bono option. Five minutes of my time. All right, awesome. Thanks so much for sharing that and being part of our summit today. And um, Nicole, Nicole Farrell, where is it that um, the audience can connect with you? Okay, so I am on Facebook. Um, people, it may be easiest for people to get me on Facebook on my personal profile, which is Nicole Farrell. That's N I C O L E F A R R E W -L, L. And um, if you go on my personal profile, you will see the links to my other pages, but my business page, I will just let you all know my business page is Okura Events, which is A U. C O U R A N T E V E N T Z. And I'm also on LinkedIn at Nicole S. J. Farrell. So those are some options that you can um you can get me on. And like I said, it may be easiest to get me at Nicole Farrell on Facebook, and you can always get my links from there. So thank you. All right, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And Tanya, Welcome. Tanya, where is it that we can connect with all of your things? On social media, you'll find me under Talking with Tanya. That's all social media. That's um, where you'll be able to find us. And then um, as well, my website, tanyajmiller.com, and be on the lookout for the Motivated Effort Project. The Me Project is coming out um, in a couple of weeks. All right. Thanks so much for sharing. And my last two speakers, Nina and Rebecca. Um, because I don't see one now yet. We'll include all the links inside the Facebook community, the badass mission driven uh, Facebook entrepreneur community. So uh, don't worry, you'll find all the guests there. And I want to thank everyone for being part of this amazing summit and all the knowledge that everyone shared. It was inspiring and also it was was a uh, quick action strategy behind it as well. So um, I am hoping that a lot of value out of it. And, and I would like to personally invite you on a masterclass challenge in really going through <laughs> the framework on how to build your business up to seven figures. That's uh, running from June 20 to the 24th. And I will include the details of that as well inside this amazing summit and community. Community. Thank you so much, everyone. We ran a little over the hour, but of course, you know, it's hard to, uh, to wrap up all the knowledge and expertise in just 60 minutes, but we, we almost did. So thanks so much for joining, and I'll see you in upcoming, uh, the upcoming summit for next month. And have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone.